thought these spindles were moving along. Bollocks. Oh, I think I'm going to put a piece of wood under here. I'm only 30 mil off there. That's 30 mil there. I was working off the height of the handrail, not the length of the spindles. Dust extraction for that saw is crap, so I am bothered putting me with hoover on. Right, you didn't see nothing right. Okay, be right. Right, the biggest gap can't be more than 100 mil. I've just stood them in there just to see how many I need. Um, I think I'm going to put them somewhere like that. I don't want a big gap there. I don't want to shuffle them up because they'll be all quite tight. So I think I'm going to work it out at like that and then even these up. Right. These are cut at 85, which gives me a space of less than 100 mil. I haven't put any top ones in yet. But that gives me a space there of 75 mil and a space there 85 so I'll cut two pieces at 80 mil and tap that over and bang them in pins and glue Do all these together. Right, stairs now. Right. 
Right. A couple of pencil marks. I need to measure from there to there. I'll measure it properly, but that's about about one eighty. Might be difficult to show you, but that distance to there is 2595 and I've got 180 all right hailstone I'll try and explain the spacing it hurts my brain to think about it I don't, don't do this very often so spindle and space was 180. The total distance on the bottom rail was 2595. So what I need to do is divide that by 180. From the bottom it's space spindle, space spindle, space spindle, but when you get to the top it's just a space, you know there isn't another spindle because that's the top newel post. Spare. So I need to, nah fuck it, I'll just ignore that. I'll divide it by 180 and that'll give me a rough idea, you'll see why I'm ignoring it in a minute. That, that'll give me a rough idea how many spindles I need to use my calculator, so. Alright, so that divided by that is 14.416. I'm going to round that up to 15. Add in another spindle or half a spindle will close my gaps and make sure that I'm less than a hundred mil that maximum gap you can have is hundred mil like I say. So adding you know rounding it up will squeeze everything together a little bit more. Right, fifteen. Oh mister what I'm gonna do is add up the amount of spindles, the total width of all the spindles together and that'll leave me the size of the gap so imagine I've got all the spindles squished them to one end that total distance will leave me a gap so 15 spindles we're working on the we can't measure it that way because we're working this distance which is 55 mil so 15 55s Brain don't work. 825. Calculator told me. So, all those spindles I need to deduct from the overall measurement. So, 2595 minus 825. 5 from knots. No, 527. 8 from 15. 7. Alright. Yeah. Right. So that I need to now divide by fifteen. But you've got a space at the top, so you've got space, spindle, space, spindle, space, spindle. So you've got fifteen spindles, but you've got sixteen spaces. So I need to divide that by sixteen. Let's do it over here. One seven seven oh divided by sixteen. One into that, one, seventeen, so one, nothing. So I know that's almost one, so one one ish, one one o oh ish is the space between spindle, space, spindle. That distance is one one o. Oh. I'm going to use a off cut and a piece of wood. One more now. Just square that over. There we go. We said one more a bit. <laughs> we got a bit. 
So what I'm going to do is carefully mark on the bottom rail one of these, one of these, Let's see how it works out. So I've got one that I cut as a template. I'm cutting all the bottoms first. So I've got to stop. Uh, so that's all the bottoms cut. I reset my stop on my template piece. I reset my stop for the tops. Right, for these infill pieces it was 110 I believe. marking piece that I was using. Mm, difficult to get a stop on that. Better off cutting that way. Stop's got something to get to go against. Stop's got this edge to go against if it was the other way, like that. That pointy bit might end up behind there. So I'm going to cut them like that. Thirty of them, fifteen spindles. There's fourteen here. There's one in the house there. I need thirty-two of these in theory, but I'll see what the top ones finish at. So now it's just a case of spacer, spindle, spacer, spindle. Bring them in. Glue and pins again. Right, I'm getting near the top. 
see my pencil lines when I mark this out that was that piece and you see I could have been just very slightly out gained a millimetre or so this I cut at 110 but it was only one so you know I could have gained a millimetre on each one 15 mil but you see the last one that was 20 25 mil out see I put that down to my I trusted my measurements and I put it down to you know my marking but for whatever reason I've gained oh a good 20 25 mil that spindle if it went by my marks on the wall to the finished about there but if I drop that one in and then put this last spindle in right way up if it'll stay there so that works out about right so you have to trust your measurements sometimes so I'll put this last one in and then I'll cut two pieces to fit in there same on top so sometimes you just got to trust your calculations I obviously marked it wrong so I just cut two pieces the same as these and cut it to the stop you see five mil out I'll trim these pieces oops that one's less than five that's about three or four that'll do me right just got that a little bit to do now three spindles in that You could work off your horizontal from there to there, divide it up, sit a couple of spindles in, that would give you distance for your spacers. But I prefer to just work on the diagonal. You gotta transfer that mark anyway. Right, for this little bit up here, I've got a dilemma. Two is that's 103 that's about 103 that's about 103 two probably looks about right Pushing the 100 mil boundary, but three is going to be too many. My tape's just holding that middle one; it wanted to slide. But I think three might be too many. I could open them up and have a tighter gasp here and there. I don't know, it's not like three actually. I think that's what I'm going to go for. So I might move that one over just a fraction so it's the same distance as that one, and then even this one up and put this one in the middle. Right, so I've just shoved them over there. This is a simple version of what I did on there. I took the overall measurement, deducted the spindles on the diagonal, then whatever that gap was left, I 
I divided that by the amount of spaces, so one, two, three, before in this case. I don't know if I'm going to do that here, but that's what I did on there. So, tape measure's just holding that one. So that pencil mark there is that distance off there. That one's in the centre. Near enough. So what I'll do is cut four pieces to go there and there, fix this one in the centre and then fix this one either side and then cut some pieces to go in that gap. And so like I says, centre, that distance there, it's the same as that distance there, same at the top, four little pieces. Bit tight, some of these. Oh, I need to push that down. But I'll put these in, put these other spindles in, and then fill in the space. I think that looks alright. We'll round off the tops of these, something like that. Glue to get off. Round off that top. Bit of sanding, a little bit of filling here and there.
decorate it against all the rest out. Right, well that's it. That mistake hasn't been mentioned, so I'm saying now gives the carpet something to go up against. Let's look at the positive. Better than it was.